coming back to my channel. See, that noise there on my welcome video always spoils it. Always. Which noise? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to start advanced calculus. We are starting with parameterization. So, a big question that will come to your mind is what is parameterization? And why do we have to parameterize? Why does the big word parameterization have to come about? First of all, what's a function? Does anybody know what a function is? Hello? What's a function? Okay, if you have a mapping f such so that x is mapped into y, a function is a mapping that takes elements from here to a unique element here. It's a mapping that takes element from x to a unique element in y. So, suppose that we have f is a mapping from r to r. If I take minus 2 here, and I say f of minus 2, I cannot have that f of minus 2 is equal to 5, and x of f of minus 2 is equal to minus 5. This is not a function. If it is a function, then it must take f of minus 2 to a unique y. Only one y. Here. Yeah. Do you understand? What happens when we see a mapping that looks like this? In fact, a mapping that defines that. Something like this. If you observe, if I take this x, this is the x as this. If I take this x as x1, you would see that mapping this up, it hits the curve on the other point. And let's take that as our y1. You will see that it also hits the map again on another point, y2. There is a problem with this map. So how do we make this map easier to work with? We call it parameterization. If I have x as a map to be equal to cos t, and I have y to be equal to sin t. I can create a curve with what, I'm, what I have here. I need to ask myself, what's the relationship between this cos t and this sin t? OK? So what do you think is the relationship? Is a relationship that comes to your mind first, that has cos and sin in an equation? Nobody. Cos squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1. Do you know that? Sure. Yes. So, if I, as you can see, this is x, cos is x, so you have x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. What kind of equation is this? So that's the equation of a circle. Where is the center that? Where is this center that? One square. No. The general equation of the circle is what? X minus A squared plus Y minus B squared is equal to R squared. The center of this circle is A, B. Which is 0, 0. So the center, this is the equation of the circle. Center that what? Yes, that's 0, 0. If you like. Of radius what? One. Good. The square root of one is still one. The one that they got from the machine. So we're going to consider this equation. We have x is equal to cos t and y is equal to minus sin t. Where t is in, where t is in between zero and five. We are going to describe the equation of the curve. So we're going to get the equation of the curve that this represents. And we are going to sketch the curve. OK? So like I told you, you're going to get the relationship between this and this. So what's the relationship between cos t and minus sin t? What comes to mind? You need to know. Uh, your trig identities. Yes, your trig identities. Nothing's coming to mind. Sign. I have. Sign squared t. 
Okay, sign 20 plus cos 20 is equal to 1. Now, how can I use this with this? I know that this means that sign t squared plus cos t squared is equal to 1. If I put minus here, nothing squared. Yes. Because square will remove it. No, if you put square the square at the back of sign, no, yes. it's inside. It's inside the bracket. It's inside the bracket. Okay. So it's what do we have? We have y squared plus x squared is equal to one. Yeah. If you like, you can rearrange it. This is still the equation of the circle, right? Yes. And the center that what? Origin. Center that origin. Of radius uh, one. Now another question is: I don't know where to start. I don't know where to stop. What helps me? Like when I'm sketching, I want to sketch this graph: n squared plus y. I know it's a circle, and I know it's center than zero, and I know that the radius is one. But I don't know where to start, and I don't know where to stop. Is it a full circle? Is it a semicircle? Or is it quarter of a circle? I don't know what to do. So what helps me is this interval that was given. I'm going to plug in this interval here and here and get my first point. Plug in this interval here and here and get my second point. And when I do that, I'm going to have my start and my stop. Okay. Okay, so um, if I put zero here, because zero is what? Because sign minus sign zero is what? Zero. It's still zero. Okay. Here, cos pi is what? Cos pi. Minus one. Minus one. No, minus one. Sign pi is what? Zero. Okay. Um, the next thing to do is just to draw my Cartesian plane. When you draw your Cartesian plane, never forget to label y axis x axis zero. This is very important. Then the next thing you need to label this is my center. My radius is one. So let's let's call this one. Call this minus one. This is start. This is stop. And call this minus one, call this one. Now, where is one comma zero here, right? And where is minus one comma zero here? Okay. And this is a semicircle. Yes, it's a semicircle that will start here and stop here. Okay. By default, you start block by I don't mean it was still five. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, am I going to go like this? Yes, no. Or I'm going to go like this. Anticlockwise, naturally. When you have anticlockwise rotation, it is positive. This and this one are positive. The other one. When it is anti-clockwise against the clock, when you have a negative, it goes clockwise. We've seen that this one has a negative sign here, so we are going to go and um, clockwise, right? Mm -hmm. Clockwise. How does the clock go? It goes like this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but this is our start point. So we are going to go through here and stop here. My my circle is not fine. <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know. Okay, so that's the equation that I represent. So we can try other one. Okay, so we're going to take some examples on parametrization. Many examples actually. We have question one to five, and we may even have more. But let's try this, and then I'll give you the rest as exercises to try yourself. 
Okay? So if we have this question, this is simple, right? It's almost exactly what we've done before. We have x is equals to cos 2t and y is equals to sin 2t. What comes to your mind? What trick function comes to your mind? Sin x, x for x plus cos y. It said sin squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So if we, you, please let's not use x. Maybe we can use um, k. It's a dummy variable. So okay. Okay. Suppose k is equal to 2t. Whoa. So what do you have? You have sine 2t squared plus cos 2t squared. Good. If I square this, I have that this is equal to sine squared 4t plus cos squared 40, right? Yes. So if I take 40 to be equal to k, k, yes. I have that this is equal to 1. But this whole thing is x. Is what? Y. This y is not x. So this whole thing is y squared. Okay. To see it clearly, see it at this side. This thing is y. Squared. Here is x squared is equal to 1. So the equation we have here is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. It's still a circle. Yes. Our start point is that. The only thing is that our start and end will change. So you have 0 is less than 5. Is less than 2 is less than or equal to 5. So if I put this here, if I put zero first of all here, what do I have? My x is cos 2 times 0, cos 0, 1. My y is cos 2 times 0, sine 2 times 0, zero. sine 0, so 0. So we are starting here at, we'll put pi here, cos 2 pi is what? Zero. Four is one. One. Sine two pi is what? It's one. No, it's zero. 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 So our starting point is our ending point. And because the signs are positive, are both positive. So a, a question was asked before: if one of them is negative, then the the orientation will be negative orientation which is clockwise. If both of them okay. are negative or both of them are positive, then the orientation will be positive orientation. Yes. So this, both of them are positive, so our orientation is positive. Let's sketch it. Okay. So we have, we'll draw our Cartesian plane first, like we said. Then next we must label it y as this, x as this. After we put our zero, then we check what is our r. Our r is 1, the center is origin, 0, 0. So I'm going to start 1, the difference is still going to be 1. So this will be minus 1, 1, minus 1. Now, um, it's positive orientation, means that it's anti-clockwise. So I'm going to go this way, against the clock. So I'll move like this, until I get back to 1, 1, 0. This is 1, 1, 0. So that's the equation of the circle, the complete circle. So you see the difference between this one and when it was just t. Uh -huh. If it's just t, it will have been a semicircle because the end point will not be the start point. That's clear, right? You can go for this. Yes. Any question? How do you have a subject? 
Okay. Let's continue with this thing. Is it? Yeah, yeah there's a question. Oh, that's a question. Okay. Um, uh, in parameterization, there's a way you can modify that one. Like, cost 2t. Mm -hmm. You assume you to be 2t. Okay. So, that's So, it will make life easier for you yeah. from the beginning. So, what he's saying is that if you wanted to start this, not to put it the point though, just to get what the parameterized equation is, you would have said that maybe x is equal to cos u and y is equal to sine <laughs> u, where u is equal to 2t. You get the equation, or you can say k, uh -huh. cos k and sine k. And then you have this equation, and you have that this is equal to this. But when you are substituting the point, be careful, it's t you are giving, not k or you anything. put it there. Uh -huh. So it's t you are giving, so you now put it back into the original equation you are giving. So you don't make the mistake of substitution. So the interval will change. Yes. So those are two ways of solving it. I don't think from the from the intervals you can maybe say complete circle. Not necessarily true. You can't just easily see. Like this now. If you were using what you learned before, you would have thought that this is half circle because this interval is from zero to five, not to five. Like when you, after you have substituted, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Yes, after you substituted, you know whether it's a complete circle. If it stops at the starting point, then it's a complete circle. But if it stops at any other point that is not the starting point, then it's not a complete circle. Number two, we have x is equal to cos 5 minus t, and y is equal to sine 5 minus t. Now we are going to do the same thing, what you just suggested now. Let's take this to be mu. So let u be cos to 5 minus t. So you have that x is equal to cos u and y is equal to sine u. And then you know that sine squared u plus cos squared u is equal to 1. This means that what? x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Now I want to substitute what I was given that t is in between 0 and 5. I'm not going to come and substitute it here. Wrong. I won't do that. I will go back to the equation they gave me from the beginning here and substitute it. So if t is 0, what do I have? I have that. If t is 0, I'm going to put it here now. I have cos pi. Cos pi is what? Minus 1. If t is 0 again, I still have sine pi, sine pi is zero. So this is my start. My stop. If t is pi, I have cos zero, cos zero is what? One. If t is pi, I have sine zero, sine zero is what? Zero. So my start is at minus one. And for the orientation, we see that this is positive, this is positive, right? Yes. So, I'm going to come here and sketch. So, the first thing to do is to draw your partition plane and then label, right? Then, the radius is 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. And then, we are going to start from minus 1. 0, right? And we are going to end at 1, 0. It's anti-clockwise. Anti anti-clockwise. Because they are both positive. Yeah, both anti-clockwise is... This is clock. Mm -hmm. Clock is going like this. So anti-clockwise is like this. So I'm going to start from here, and I'm going to go and meet it here. And that's the sketch. Mm -hmm. I thought you said this is anti-clockwise. You are going to be Yes, that's anti-clockwise. Anti clockwise, see clockwise. Clockwise is from 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, okay, 2 o'clock. Okay. okay, for this third one, I can guess that it's not a circle. 
because of the coefficient of of cost and sign. But I'm not sure what it is until I put my pen down. Now you can easily see that because there's nothing I will do that will have cos square theta, theta times square theta and have the same coefficient brought out. Okay. The coefficient of this is not equal to the coefficient of this. Yeah. So I might need to multiply one of them with something or divide. Do you understand? Yeah. So I have that my x is equal to cos 4 cos t yeah. and my y is equal to 2 yeah. times t. And obviously, I have cos and sine. So the relationship that comes to my mind is still cos squared u plus sine squared u is equal to 1. But I have an issue with this. So what I need to make this coefficient to be exactly this coefficient. So I can say 2y. 2y is equal to 4 sine t. Now I can have that 4 cos t squared plus 4 sine t squared is equal to, I don't know what it is. This. this will give me what? First of all, it's going to give me 4 squared, which is 16, good. Cos squared t plus 16 sine squared t. I'm having an issue that is 16 that is 16. You can put it outside. Yes, yeah, I factorize. So factorize this is 16 into what? Plus square plus t one. plus sine. For people that are following, it's equal to 16 times 1, 16. Mm -hmm. So I have that x and 2y gave me that. So what do I have? This, is, this one is x squared, x squared. plus 2y all squared. Be careful. Yeah. Is equal to 16. So what do I have here? I have x squared plus 4y four four squared is equal to 16. Now I need here to be 1 so that it can give me the equation of, for the of an ellipse. Okay, it will not be an ellipse. Not a circle, an ellipse. Yeah. Ellipse looks like a circle, but not a circle. Yeah. Okay, so we divide by 16 you now. We divide everywhere by 16. Of course. So divide through by 16, I have x squared over 16 yeah. plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. Yeah. Let me remind you the equation of an ellipse. The equation of an ellipse is of the form f squared over a squared, squared plus y squared, squared over b squared, squared is equal to 1. a is 4, right? Yeah. And my b is what? 2. Good. Now the next step is to sketch this equation. We have the equation is what? The equation is now going to give me x squared over 4 squared plus y squared over 2 squared. See where I came from? It's equal to 1. And we have the minor in an ellipse. And we know that the coordinate is 0 less than or equal to t. It's less than or equal to 2 pi. So I'm going to be substituting into this, so let's watch, okay? 0, x4 is equal to 4. I don't even think there's any way. 4, comma what? Two, 4, comma 0, mm -hmm. and then what? The, at 2, 5, we have the same 4. 4, comma 0. Okay, so it's a complete a complete ellipse. It's complete. Exactly, it's going around. Yes, it doesn't stop. Well, the y is two, the x is four. So let's sketch. Okay. So the center of this is zero comma zero. So I I forgot to write that this is x minus k squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. So k, k. Yeah, zero, zero. Let's call this h. k, h is 0, 0. Mm -hmm. So we center at the origin. Let's look up. We've seen that a, comma b is 4, two. comma 2. Mm -hmm. What you do is on the x axis, which is what is this, you have to write a here. Mm -hmm. Minus a here. 
B here, minor B here. So I'm going to use that relationship to sketch this. My B is 2, so I can come down a bit and put it here too. Come up a bit, minus 2. My A is 4, so I can leave it here. Minus 4, 4. Now I'm going to sketch. It looks like a circle, but it's not a circle. So it doesn't need to. It's starting from 4, 0, starting from here, yeah. and then in here. And we see that it's positively oriented, so it's anti clockwise. Yeah. And we're going to go like this. <laughs> So we are done with this. So let's go have any questions. We are done with this. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, because the question I have is, my, is uh, especially how you got the. Uh, I understood how you got your system factorized outside. Yeah. How did the system now jump to the other side? And we can this that one. 16 times 1. Okay, you multiply 16 or the no, right and No, no. We had, we had 16 plus square t plus 16 times square t, right? This is equal to what I don't know. This is equal to 16 open bracket cos square t plus sine square t. But this whole thing is 1. So this is 16 times 1. So you know we tell the same thing. Yeah, they're going to. Jojo. So we have solved this, we have solved this, we have solved this. We are here. So we have this is all we've been doing, first of all, a trick trick parameterization. Now we want to do straight line or polynomial parameterization. So we have x to be equal to 2t. And y is equal to 5t. And y is equal to 5t. I need to know the relationship between x and y. I can see that t is common. I can see that here, this means that t is equal to x over 2. So this implies that anywhere I see t now, I'm going to put it. I'm going to write that t y is equals to five y times what x over two, which is t. So this is going to give me what five x over two. So therefore, y is equals to five over two x. This is the gradient, this positive gradient. So it's upward to two. Should we sketch? Yes. Uh, and then they said t is bigger than zero, so you have to be careful. So let's get it. Locate where t is zero, because they said t is greater than or equal to zero. So I cannot go below, I cannot try to do anything under here. Yes. Nothing is happening here. This is greater than zero. Yes. Why? t is greater than zero means that x is greater than zero. Yes. And t is greater than zero means that y is greater than zero. Mm -hmm. So in fact, all here too, it's not part of it. Because this is the only place where x and y are uh, greater than zero. Too. So now that you have that, the gradient of the slope is 5 over 2. You, just, you, can, you can just pick a point, maybe 1. You see that the y will be 5 over 2, right? Mm -hmm. Try to pass through that point. And make sure you put your arrow. Oh, ah, we've not been putting our arrow. We should have. To do it better. We are understood. This one can go to infinity. Yes. So that's, that's, that's as simple as that. So no cosine, no sign. So, if you can you imagine what would happen if this was minus 5? If that was minus 5t, we have that x is equal to 2t implies that t is equal to x over 2. And then y 
which is equal to minus 5t is equal to minus 5 times x over 2, which is equal to minus 5 over 2x. Good. The next thing is to plot, to plot it. If you sketch the graph, you have to be careful. You know that t is bigger than or equal to 0. What does that mean? It means that <coughs> it means that t is bigger than 0 means that x is bigger than 0. T is bigger than 0 means that y is less than 0. So we need x to be positive and y to be negative. And that is here. 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 So every year here is not part of our sketching. So we are now going to sketch it and we have that anywhere that x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is minus 5 over 2. So I'm going to just try to pass through that point and just going to give it something like this. Yes. Now, if, if both of them are negative, if both of them are negative, what will happen? This is minus now. This is going to be minus, right? And then this is going to be minus. And then this is going to be plus. And then we have. We have that. We have that y is equal to 5 over 2x, but since t is bigger than 0, we have that x is less than 0, mm -hmm. y is less than 0, mm -hmm. x is less than 0, y is less than 0, and then we'll have here. Here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's a hard have to be careful. I'm confused too. The reason why I'm confused is because the gradient is five. The gradient is positive, mm -hmm. and x and y are negative. So how do I get it? Yeah, well, you know, if you follow the third pattern, that's why I'm going to write it. The arrow will be facing here. Yes. The arrow will be facing upward. So it's going to be this, and then the arrow will be facing upward. Yes. So, nice case, Ethan. Yes. At the end of this class, nobody will be able to say that. I don't understand parameterization. Come. If I give you any exercise of parameterization, I'm sure. I'm sure that you have solved it. It doesn't matter whether you solve it or not. If you don't solve it, it's your problem. But I'm sure. <laughs> eh? You say what? Both of us need to praise. We must be again in fact. I mean, nobody will understand. And we can't say most. Say most. We can't help you, but one thing we can do for you is that you will see us on our YouTube channel. Thank you. So it's our YouTube channel. X is equal to minus z t and y is equal to tan t. Somebody can see this and say, I am confused, I'm stuck. Where do I start from? Fear not, even if you don't know the relationship between z and tan. Even if you don't know the no inverse, even if you don't know the relationship between z and tan, don't be afraid. What is sex? One over cos t. And then what is si tan t? Sine over cos. Sine cos. Cos t over sin t. So if I have conic identity, which is cos, if I divide true by cos, cos squared t, I will have sex squared t at the side. Let's see. Cos squared t. This is called using what you have to get what you want. Yes. Okay. So this is 1 yes. plus tan, tan squared t. t. Be careful. Yes. 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 Yes
So if I substitute now, sec squared t is the same thing as minus sec t all squared. So now let's substitute. We have 1 plus y squared is equal to x squared. Now let's make it look like something that we, we have that x squared minus y squared is equal to 1. What type of equation is this? This is a second. This is a hyperbola. Oh, hyperbola. Hyperbola, yeah. <laughs> the way to easily know it is this minus. It's a plus in the circle. The minus a plus. So where A and B are one. So, um, next thing is to try to sketch it right. So we have x squared minus y squared is equal to 1. So we know that minus pi over 4 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to pi over 4. When you get to this type of equation, your question is to know whether it is full, it is half, and all that. That's, that's your aim. Please close that down. Who will let me know go out. Somebody open the door and let it open. Should execute you? Yeah? I say she should execute you over a visitor. Okay. So we are going to substitute now. When we have minus pi over 4, we have x is equal to minus. Minus set t is 1 over cos t, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And y is equal to, and can t is sine over cos t. Sine t over cos t. Be careful, what you just said is cos. So we're going to substitute this now. Cos five minus 5 over two two. Minus 2 over 2. Okay. Okay. Is that what? But sine pi over 4 is also the same thing. Cos pi over 4 is minus 1. Okay. Now that I'm going to start and stop, if I substitute this into the top, then I got this. When I substitute this, I got this. Am I correct? Almost. <laughs> Math is exact. Either you're correct or you're wrong. Yeah, I almost give you half. No, they won't give you half. They don't give you answer at zero. That's that's why it's sketch. Sketch the graph. You draw the graph. So the general equation of a hyperbola is x squared minus k, sorry, x minus k. This oh, no. The general equation of a hyperbola is x, x minus k squared over k a squared minus y minus, sorry, minus, y minus h k squared over b squared is equal to 1. So here you can see that a and b, they are what? 1 comma 1, right? Yes. And we can see that k and h, they are 0 comma 0, right? Yes. And, okay. We have, the equation will look like this. This is 1, this is 1. Okay. Center that zero. Okay. okay. So this is minus one. This is sorry. This is one. This is minus one. This is minus one. So hyperbola looks like two C's back in each other or two bowls. Uh -huh. So the what what makes 
what makes the difference is what is here. If x is here, we have two c's. If y is the one starting here, we have two bowls backing each other, like this and like this. It will be oriented at the y axis. So whatever is the first one is where we are orienting it at. X axis. Okay, so it's going to be this and this. Should we point seven also at x? A minus point seven and point seven. Yes, point seven and point seven. Not one. What is for y axis? Do you want me to look at it like that? It's two or minus two over root two is point seven. Okay. For x. I now understand the confusion. <laughs> so why you are sketching? This is the general. We are using the general equation to sketch. This general equation is not going to sketch. Ah, please can you explain the the bowl something you're talking about? Okay. So now, if x is starting it, that x is the positive side, then it's going to look like two c's backing each other. Okay. But if you have y squared minus x, x squared, squared is equal to 1, yeah, it's going yeah. to look like you put a bowl on the table and you put another bowl upside down, upside down, down under the table. Okay, that's the negative x. Yeah. When you are sketching, if it is the x axis that you are focusing on, you are going to use it all through 1 minus 1. That's why it's going to cut. Okay. If it is the y axis, whatever is under it is where you are going to cut from. Okay. It's where you are going to stop hit the y axis from. Okay. He said, why am I not using this point to sketch this? The x bar? Yeah. yeah. No, it has nothing to do with sketching the general top of the hyperbola. The only thing I'm going to use it to do now is to check what what point is this? This is minus this point here actually is minus yeah, one point one, one four okay one four something seven. something something yes comma minus one yeah does that look like somewhere inside somewhere around here right inside exactly somewhere around here somewhere around here x is Minus one point one four, somewhere around here. Yeah. And then this one is minus one point one four comma one. Mm -hmm. Here. Comma one. So I don't need this part. This point here. This point here is minus 1.14 comma 1 and then this point here is minus 1.14 comma sorry comma minus 1 comma 1 and if I had another coordinate in this side I would have left it there with that but that whole place is not sketched in the really part we get given here so generally it has to be through one class the points it has to pass through. It has to pass through the what a is. Okay. The difference between the the center, which is zero, and a should be this. Okay. Any question? So it will pass through negative root two or negative two over root two, right? On the x axis. This graph does not have an end. It doesn't. What we are using this thing for? Yes, it will pass through if you are right. But what I'm saying is, what we are using it for is to know how to draw the graph, where the orientation. To know whether we have the full. Let's, let's see one more about hyperbola. Then we'll leave parameterization. We'll try this one now. We have that x is this and y is this. We are looking for the relationship between x and y. Okay? So we have 
that x is equal to square root of c. So let's make c the subject of formula. If we square both sides, we are good. So I'm going to come here now. And anyway, I see c, I'm going to write x squared. So y is equal to square root of x squared plus 1. So what we have, we have y squared is equal to x squared plus 1. Now we have that y squared minus x squared is equal to 1. So you see that it's centered at 0, 0. And we see that a and b are 1, 1. But I just need the, I need the b. What B is? B is 1. I'm okay. No, A is 1. Okay. I know you are confused now. This minus is. You don't think you are not saying it. Okay. I understand. I understand. Let's do this equation. A is plus or minus 1. B is plus or minus 1 because of the square. So, now. Um, we have that t is bigger than 0. <coughs> if t is bigger than 0, what does it mean? It means that x is bigger than 0, right? Yes, ma'am. If t is bigger than 0, it means that y is bigger than 0, right? So I have x and y are bigger than 0. So let's sketch. We'll sketch how the hypogonal should be. Then we'll now sketch this equation we are given that t is bigger than or equal to 0. So I'm labeling the test. Always remember to label. Okay? Then to label one and then minus one. Yes, ma'am. So um, I'm going to put it to sit like this. And upside down, right? Yeah. So that's how it looks like. Because y is as a test. Yes. Now is it that x and y is bigger than zero? So it's only this quadrant I need. So every other thing is unnecessary. Since t is bigger than zero, the orientation is like this. So that's the sketch. That's it. So if you do the mistake and leave the other hand was. So let me give you exercise. X is equal to 3 minus 3t. Three Y is equal to 2t. T is bigger than 0. Number 2. Wait, are you giving us exercise to do now? Or yes, yes. yes. No, 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 no. Now? I want to see what they are doing now. Uh, now. Yes. And I, I was thinking that they are doing you want it to be a seven. You want to carry it over. No, it doesn't. No, there's no time for that. Okay. I think that's all for that. No time for that. You don't do that. That's all. So let me let me talk to my people. My people, my people. We have come to the end of this video. I would like you to try. Number one, we have that x is equal to 3 minus 3t, three y is equal to 2t, t is bigger than 0. And we have y x is equal to cos t minus 5, y is equal to sine t minus 5. t is in between pi and 2t. Please give it a try and let me see your answers in the comments, comment section below. Tell me the equation it represents and the type of equation is be a hyperbola, is be a parabola, is be a, is it an ellipse? Anyone you say it is, give as much as possible in details the description that you feel like it represents when sketched. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.